Hello, everybody. Happy day 14 of the challenge. You are virtually halfway through the challenge because tomorrow is day 15. And of course, today, Monday, November 14th, you had quite a big challenge day. So let's go ahead and look at this. So for today, as we spoke about yesterday, your new challenge now since you passed the 10-day mark is to make your bed up every morning if you don't already do that. And your last meal should be between 5 and 7 p.m. No snacking after 7 p.m. This allows your digestive system at least tw 12 hours of rest between dinner and breakfast. What this is also doing, guys, so when you when you go into REM sleep at, at night, like we kind of spoke about that yesterday with the brain waves from the eye to the brain, but what's also happening is your blood is now running out to heal all these organs, to heal your skin as you're in that deep, deep, deep trance of sleep. But if you snack at night, if you're getting up and you're eating before bed, then your blood isn't having the chance to actually go and do what it needs to do at night because it's too busy working in the digestive system to digest the, the snack that you ate in the middle of the night. This is why if you start cutting your food between 5 and 7 p.m. and giving yourself that 12 hours before your next meal, you're going to most likely wake up feeling more refreshed. You're going to wake up with more energy. You're going to wake up looking younger, looking more rested. And so I'm curious to see if you guys are starting to notice that. If you were at one point a nighttime snacker, a midnight snacker, and you've now started to cut that habit and observe that habit and not allowing yourself to indulge in that habit, are you noticing a difference in the way you feel the next morning? How is making your bed up every morning affecting your day? I can't remember the last time I didn't make my bed up in the morning because I just don't think I would have a good day if I didn't because it helps get my brain organized for the day at hand. Now, picking from your exercises, today you had four exercises to pick from, either doing the 45-minute kickboxing, the 60-minute sweat into the oldies, the 45-minute bar, or the half primary series. So I'm curious to know which one of these you picked and why. For your meditation, you had one of three to pick. You could have either done the sound bowl healing, the all meditation, or the chakra healing. Obviously, you had your food journal again, and of course, today in your journal, you had to journal about the choices you picked with exercise, if it was overwhelming for you, how those choices are affecting you. Are you picking the choices that are right for you? Like I keep saying, with the meditation especially, the ones you want to be picking are the ones that are challenging you the most, not the easy stuff. The easy stuff is boring. The easy stuff is not what you need to be picking. And that's going to be different for every person, okay? So like for some people, they're going to find the bar really easy and not triggering. But for other people, they're going to find the bar triggering. Vice versa with all the other exercises. So are you intelligently picking your exercises based on the work at hand? Or are you falling into patterns of laziness by picking the pleasurable exercises that make your mind feel good? Which we spoke about last week. There's a sutra in the Yoga Sutra that talks about this. The mind is going to go towards pleasure to avoid pain. But if it keeps going to that pleasure to avoid pain, it's eventually going to end up in more pain. And so are you starting to recognize that? Today, you also need to look at the um, four upper chakras, looking deep at to, into that. And of course, the big one today was writing a hand letter to someone you admire and sending it to them. We spoke in depth about that yesterday and day 13. And so I'm really curious to see how this particular exercise affected you. Let's go ahead and look into tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, November 15th. This is your halfway mark. You got this halfway point mantra. You didn't come this far to only come this far. So keep going. Once again, you're making your bed up, and your mat last meal should between be five, but should be between five and seven p.m. Now you're going to be doing the forty-five minute bar today. So now you have an assigned exercise today. All right, you're going to be doing the alm meditation today. So now you have a specific meditation given to you. And I'm going back and forth with this, guys, where days you pick and days you don't pick so that you can start to see your own resistance. Like, are you excited when I tell you what to do, or are you excited when you get to pick? And are you excited when you get to pick because you feel like you have the intelligence to pick now? Or are you excited because you get to pick because you fall, get to fall back into lazier habits? That is something for you to decide. That is, I can't give you the answer to that. That's something for you to study, to self. Pratyahara is what we call it in yoga. And that is the, the practice of self-study. Pratyahara. So you are studying yourself.
Halfway mark edu educational contemplation. In Hindu tradition, Tuesday is Hanuman's day. Below is a video from Esoteric Atlanta where Bryce speaks to Hanuman of Hanuman and his representation of courage. Please watch this video because you will have some questions in your journal entry today to reflect on courage. All right. I've spoken about this story from the Ramayana many times, but I want you to reflect on that because we're going to, after I go through this, we're going to talk again about the dark night of the soul and what that looks like. All right, you're also journaling your food again. So tomorrow, you're at the halfway mark. How are you feeling? What has surprised you the most about this experience? What have you learned about yourself? What has shocked you the most about yourself? What is motivation? What is discipline? What is the difference between the two? What, where, where were you motivated in the beginning? What about now? Is it getting harder to get up and exercise? At what point does motivation in and discipline take over? What is devotion? What is sadhana? So sadhana is a spiritual devotion, a, a, a practice to a devotion of spirituality. It's a discipline. It's not motivation is like, we don't need to rely on motivation. What we need to rely on is discipline. And again, we're going to talk about that more in a second. How is your daily exercise, journaling, meditation, etc. turned into your daily devotion? If you're a person of faith, do you feel the presence of God with you as you work through yourself, especially on the hard days? Do you recognize the power of using your body to burn through all that binds you emotionally so you can be more vulnerable with yourself and God? Again, that goes back to the Ramayana story with Hanuman and Ravana that you're going to study today. How has this experience affected your relationship with those around you? Are you more patient? Do you recognize the courage it takes to embark on shadow work? Like Hanuman returning Sita to Ram by defeating Ravana. How has your courage brought your soul back to God by going to war with your own ego during the process? When the ego told you it's too hard or you should just give up or you're too tired to do this today, when did your courage say no to the ego and do the work anyway? Days you lost to the ego and slept in, what did you learn from that experience? If there were days you didn't do the whole challenge assignment for the day, can you forgive yourself and start again tomorrow? Today, you did the exact same exercise you did on day one, the 45-minute bar with Marty Alton. Do you notice a difference in your body from day one to today? All right, go back and reread all of your journal entries up to this point. What has changed? How have you evolved? Okay, so that's for tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, November 15th. All right, so let's once again look at this idea of courage and the dark night of the soul. And so I want to remind you guys that if you are under the impression that spirituality should feel good or should be like seeing unicorns and butterflies and rays of light, then you are sorely misled about what spirituality is. All the spiritual scriptures, not just the Gnostic Christian scriptures, but throughout the East, all the scriptures that speak about this work of spirituality, they speak about going to war against yourself, against your own ego. What again is the ego? The ego is the false sense of self. The ego is what is mortal, where your soul is not. Your soul and your ego are not the same thing. The soul is what's real. The ego is fake. It's just a facade. Okay, and so most of us are living through survival of the ego. The purpose of the ego is to provide you with that resistance so that your soul can know itself. And so I want to remind you guys, if you're struggling, if there is darkness coming up, if you are still having a, a panic attack when the alarm goes off at 4 o'clock in the morning, that's what's supposed to happen. I was just talking about it in the group text. You know, Watch when you say, like, I'm not a morning person or I don't like getting up early in the morning. That's the artful dodger of the ego. That's the mind going towards pleasure and away from pain. And I'm going to remind you, no one's a morning person. Not one. I've been doing this for 16 years. And still, in the morning, when my alarm clock goes off, I have that immediate thought of, oh, just sleep in today. 16 years later. The difference, though, is that I've been doing this for so long that I know the benefits. I know what discipline is. When we look in Christianity, what did Yahshua call his students? He called them disciples. What word does disciple come from? It comes from the word discipline. There is a discipline involved and you cannot absolutely 100% you cannot evolve spiritually if your body is not involved in the process. That is why all these ancient religions had 
physical exercise with them. That is why the practice of yoga that predates almost every religion out there involves physical exercise. Why? Because the body is the Shakti. It's the expression of the soul. The body is also what's going to offer the soul that resistance because the body has also been the manifest man man manufacturer of the ego or the false sense of self. And so if you're bypassing the exercise, if you're bypassing all of that, then you're not doing spiritual work. And the voice you're hearing in your head that you think is your intuition is actually your ego. Okay. Now, for those of you that have physical limitations, like a paraplegic or something's going on, we've spoken about this before. What do you do in that case? You sit and you bring your mind through an exercise. So you sit there, you close your eyes, and you see yourself doing a physical exercise because that thought vibration is what's going to then penetrate into the body. Yes, and so when we start to go up, really go up against that ego, we are going to have a dark night of the soul. It is not going to be fun. It is going to be uncomfortable. It is going to be painful. So much stuff is going to come up, and I want you to know that is completely normal. When stuff comes up, it is going to look like depression. It is going to look like sadness. It is going to look like body aches. It's going to look like a low-grade fever. It's going to look like a headache. It's going to look like soreness. All of this is 100% normal. And if it's happening to you, good. The practice is working. All right? And I think that's been one of the biggest revelations, at least I've noticed in the signal support group, is that times when people would have backed away from an exercise because their back hurt or their knee hurt, they're now realizing, oh, I need to keep going because something is shifting itself, okay? And I will say our support group is popping right now. So once again, if you want to join us in the support group, this is why you need a support group because this shit is hard. Even though every person is doing it on their own and, and going through their own um, ego, their own ego death, it, it helps to have other people around you saying, me too. Like I'm feeling it too to help talk you off the ledge, right? So so I would suggest if you really want to join that signal support group, go ahead and do so. And this is the hardest part for me as a teacher. This is when I have to show tough love and be like, I know you're tired. I know you don't want to get up early, but you need to. You need to. You're not the exception. You're part of the process. Every single person is going through the exact same thing. And sometimes when we know that, when we know that every single person is going through the exact same thing, it makes us feel better. You know, misery loves company. So it's like, it's nice to know that we're not the only ones that are struggling. And um, and it's never ending. Like I said, 16 years later, when my alarm goes off, I still kind of do like an eye roll and don't want to get up, right? That's why when women are on their periods, we call it ladies holiday because you don't really exercise on your period or you do light exercise to allow your, yourself to detox. So it's like you get a break from doing the hard stuff. We also know that the early morning hours are the time of God. It's Brahma Martha. So once you get over the hump and you actually, like the way that I've learned over this past 16 years, basically the alarm goes off. The minute I get myself out of bed and like go to the bathroom, I start to wake up. And the minute I actually get on my mat and I start my practice, I'm pretty awake at that point. And what tends to happen, because the earth is so quiet at that time, it is quite a monumentous time to be with God, right? And so you are, and the, the body is the most resistant at that time. The mind is the most resistant at that time. So you're at a place of full honesty and full vulnerability. And so keep going, guys. You're doing amazing. Like I said, this shit's hard. This is really hard. That's why I want you guys to study again the story of Hanuman and Ravana, the idea of this, the courage, the courage it takes to go up against the, the ego. If we never go up against the ego, if we always just leave the ego as it is, then our soul will never be in alignment with God. Sita will never be returned to Ram. Okay, so it's so important to have that courage. And it's okay if you don't have courage in this life to do it. That just means you're going to have to come back next life and do it. You'll have to you'll have to keep coming back and back and back and back and back again until you finally go what you know, go you know I I actually I need to have courage and I need to actually do this. I need to, to actually defeat my own ego, my own limitations of mind so that I can return my soul back to God. And so I am so proud of you guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. You're halfway there. You're doing it. I know at the end of this challenge, I've challenged you guys to create a challenge for December for yourself, but we are going to be doing a 60 day challenge starting in January after, after Christmas. Um, and I'm going to start working on that soon. 
So 60 days after that, I know you guys can do it. I know you can. And so, all right, you guys, let me know how you're doing down in the description box below. What's been your biggest struggle? What's been the most surprising thing that you've learned about yourself? And how are you doing overall? If you want to join the Signal group, I will put the link again in the description box below. And I hope that you're all having a wonderful start to your week. Bye.